Let's have a look at how to scale reads, specifically reads with a database proxy. And for that, we're going to use a technique called read write splitting. So let's say you have two instances of a database. Now you activate replication here. You configure and enable MariaDB replication. That means that when I write data in the primary node, it gets automatically and almost instantly replicated in the other node, in the replica. So you have data in both automatically. If you want to learn how to configure this thing and or the details on how, on how it works, then there is a video on the official MariaDB YouTube channel, Scaling Databases Data Replication Tutorial that I can recommend, uh, where I explain exactly how to configure all this stuff. Once you have that, your application, for example, it's a web application, can send the writes to the primary and the reads to the replica. So now you have, now, now the primary doesn't need to, you know, run queries, just updates and inserts. You can scale up the, um, horizontally, actually, you can scale horizontally the reads by adding more replicas. Okay. And then you do load balancing between these two replicas. So you can handle more and more reads and you can do the, the opposite. You can remove a replica when you don't need it to save, um, costs, for example. Now I put this arrow here in red for a reason, because when you add a replica or remove a replica, you need to reconfigure the web application, or maybe it could be even worse. You can, you will have to maybe implement the load balancing. You might have to, or if you don't want to, you know, if you, if you want some kind of dynamic configuration there, then you will have to implement that in the web application. That's code that you have to maintain. Now, in the case of Java, you can just use a connection string that does the, um, uh, the load balancing for you. You just say their replication. There's just a, ti a tiny bit of Java there. It's a string that defines the connection to the database and you can specify the, the IP addresses, for example, of the primary, the replica one, replica two, and the driver, the DBC driver is called like the connector for Java. It does it automatically, it does the, um, the load balancing automatically for you. So that's cool. However, if you want to add one more replica, you will have to modify this string, which means that maybe it's it requires a restart of the application. So it's, it's downtime, right? So that could be a problem unless you implement something, but then you have to implement that something. If you replace that with a database proxy that automat automatically does this uh, read write splitting for you, you can figure these things there and connect the web application instead of to the primary and the replica, you just connect to one endpoint, the, the database proxy. Then you need to worry about changes. You can add a new replica or remove it. And here I didn't put it red because this is, you can use the, for example, the graphical user interface or the command line or, or rest service to reconfigure max scale at runtime. Doesn't need to restart anything. Just define the new replica, uh, done. The web application continues to use just one single point, one single connection string in the case of Java, one connection object in case of other languages. Uh, no need to worry about how many replicas are there or if one disappeared or one appeared, none of that. The web application doesn't need to change. It just notice now that, notices now that for some reason it can perform reads faster, for example. So that's what's happening here. Also, it's resilient, right? A bit more resilient because if a replica fails, I can still read the data. So it's this kind of stuff that, that you gain here with this uh, topology. Now, talking about topology, all these, is the topology, current topology of the database, could be changed. It is isolated. There is topology isolation, and we can change it, change it by with, with something like this. Here I have, for example, three availability zones or, you know, uh, regions even, or maybe clusters, whatever it is. Mm. Maybe some of them have even columnar store through MariaDB column store to make analytics faster. So these kind of queries that are like, uh, you know, with, that work with a whole column to calculate an aggregate function there to calculate, for example, an average or count. Now it's in column storm, so those are going to be faster. And I didn't need to change the web application at all. It's just faster because I have now um, column stored there, some nodes, 
And because I was using MaxScale, I didn't need to change the web application. That's pretty cool, right? So let's go into more details in, uh, on, on like what, what kind of things could happen here. For example, in, the, in, in, in terms of read write splitting that we just saw. Let's say this, this green server here is a primary node, okay? Now, this primary node could fail, right? Something could happen. Maybe, uh, you know, something crashed in the machine, the operating system failed, an update that didn't went through correctly, or somebody even disconnected the wrong cable in the cluster, which uh, I have to confess, I did it once many years ago. I disconnected the wrong cable in a very small cluster in a small company. Fortunately, it wasn't production, it was more of a testing, but it, it kind of, <laughs> it was a problem as you can imagine, because nobody was, no, nobody was able to, to run some tests. Uh, so we make mistakes and things could fail. So what happens here? This primary node failed. Max scale can pick another one and promote it as the new primary. So we, the application can continue to, to write data in this database and all these topology, no problem. Sure, maybe there is reduced capacity, but if it was planned very carefully, it's not, it's not even noticeable. The web application doesn't notice, the user doesn't notice any, any uh, decrease in their performance. That's the whole point of having all this replication or part of the point at least. Um, now, the thing is working as before, except maybe, like I said, reduce capacity. At some point, at some point, that failing node is going to be back. It's going to be recovered, restarted, or you plug the cable that I disconnected accidentally back <laughs> in the slot, and, and now it's available. Max scale re uh, detects this automatically and configures the the previously primary server as a new replica and all of a sudden you have the same you know capacity the same uh, topology working as before automatically you need to worry about it so this is this is more or less what, what how you how you do read write splitting and and how a max scale allows you to even use more complex topologies completely isolated and they evolve without affecting web applications or applications in general.